Do you take the almanac? You don't? I thought you was a Methodist. <laughs> Everybody takes the almanac. How do you know if you're going to plant by the signs unless you take the almanac? I always shop at Ace Hardware and I fuss at them because they don't have the almanac. And if you go over to Tractor Supply, they got the almanac. But that's a fur piece to drive from where I live. But I like to plant by the signs in the almanac. Did you know that last winter, the old farmer's almanac was the only weather service in the entire country to predict the polar vortex? They were. Yeah, they were the only ones who got it right. People say, that's just a bunch of old wives' tales. No, it ain't. They got it dead on when all the local weather services had no idea what was about to strike us. Everybody takes the almanac. You remember the Rourkes that lived over at Lion Fork, Cross Pine Mountain? You know Godsey and Mondy Rourke, they, they took the almanac. Oh, I see you don't recognize them. You probably know the other side of the family tree, them what pronounce the name Roark. Yes, they's the ones that's got money and education. These wasn't Roarks, they's just Rourkes. Yeah, old Godsey and Mondy Rourke. They lived in a little cabin about halfway up the mountain. Now they took the farmer's almanac, had them a little patch of dirt and they planted by the signs. But when they took the calendar out of their almanac and hung it up on the back wall, the nail slipped and it fell off the back wall and slid down behind the stove and they had lost track of what day it was. They didn't know that it was an amber day. Do you know about the amber days on the calendar in the almanac? There's four days in the year that's called amber days. Now if you read a lot of history, you'll learn that they's put on the calendar by the Pope a long time ago for Catholics. It was a special day when you were supposed to give more offering and starve yourself like the Catholics like to do. But every Protestant knows that's really days when the devil runs patrol all through your neighborhood. Oh yeah, you don't ever swear a false oath or say something you might regret on an amber day because the devil, he'll make it stick. Well, their calendar had fallen down behind the stove and so Godsey and Mondy Rourke, they didn't know it was an amber day. They hadn't taken a particular notice. Now Godsey Rourke was the laziest piece of yarn you ever seen in your life. He never did nothing but lay around and he was stretched out there in a chair, had his legs stretched out in front of him. And his wife, Mondi, she was trying to sweep up and she tripped over his legs and nearly fell. And she jumped up and she said, look at there, you got your legs all stretched out, you old lazy thing. Good old big old long legs, you like an old mule. You nothing but a mule from the waist down. He said, I'll oh, quit your braying, woman. You ain't nothing but a mule from the neck up. <laughs> they didn't know it was an amber day and they had not ought to said that. His wife started to say, you shouldn't call me things like that. But all she could get out was, hee-haw, hee-haw. And when Godsey looked up, his wife, Mondi, had the big, long, bony head of a mule, had two ears sticking right up the top of her head, great big old nose with the nostrils a flaring out. You know, a mule gets mad at you, they'll flare your nostrils. Yeah, you know, there's some women that flare their nostrils when they get mad too. Oh, she was a sight. And then he jumped up off of the chair, and when he jumped up off the chair, he banged his head on the rafters above him. He had grown a good two feet in about two seconds. And he looked down, he had mule legs sticking right down in front of him. He had ripped out of his overalls, and they was hanging around his neck like a big bib. And he had mule hindquarters sticking out behind him and a tail a swishing around. He said, oh, look at there. It's an amber day, and now we got devil poison on us. What are we going to do? Of course, his wife couldn't say nothing. Poor old Monty, she's just standing there going, ee-ho, 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 ee-ho. He said, I know, I know what to do, I know what to do. If there's anybody who can help us with devil poison, it'll be Solomon Grundy. Now, Solomon Grundy, he lived down the road and up a holler. He's a real religious man. Yes, he had read the whole Bible in the original language, King James English. <laughs> And he said, if there's anybody could help him, it'd be Solomon Grundy. He said, you stay right here, Monty. Stay in the house. Don't let anybody look at you. And I'll go over to Solomon Grundy's and fetch him back and see if there's anything to be done. So he ran out the door and slapped himself on the hindquarters. And he tore off down the road. And he went up to the holler. He rode right up to a window at Solomon Grundy's house. And he said, Solomon, Solomon, come here. Come here. I've got to show you something. Well, Solomon wondered how old Godsey Rourke could be so tall to look through the window. He must have been standing on a bucket or a stepladder or something. He said, uh, get down off that ladder and come in the house and show me what you want to show me. He said, no, no, you got to come here. You got to come here. So he went over and he looked over the windowsill. He said, oh, what have you gone and done? He said, well, we forgot it was an amber day on account our calendar slid down off the wall behind the stove. And my wife called me a mule from the waist down. What did you call your wife? 
I said she's a mule from the neck up. Oh, you didn't, you did. We did, we did. And we want to know if you can help us. He said, well, what do you want me to do about it? He said, well, I got really good, strong hindquarters here. And my wife's got a really nice head on her. I checked all the teeth. It's a good mule betwixt us. And uh, we wondered if you could take her head and my rear end and stick them together and we'll trade you a fine plowing animal for three of them shoats that your sow shunted yesterday. He said, I don't know. I can't trade pigs for a mule less than I see the whole animal. He said, all right, all right. If you need to look at Monty, come on. Get on. I carry you over there. So Solomon Grundy come out. He climbed up on Godsey Rourke's back. He grabbed them overalls breeches as they're hanging down in front of him and pulled them up like reins. And then he dug his heels in and said, get up. And they went off down the road. They went past Fiddling John's house. Old Fiddling John, he's out on the front porch sawing away on his fiddle, working on a tune for Saturday night's barn dance. He seen that strange man a coming, riding on the back of a thing that was half man and half mule. He started a fiddling a wild devil tune, broke all the strings on his instrument and ruined the whole thing. They run on past Fiddler John's house and they come to Preacher Charles' house. Preacher Charles was outside watering his tomatoes. He had buckets in his hand and when Godsey Rourke come up, he had run so fast, he had lathered himself up good and he stopped long enough to say, Preacher Charles, I've worked myself up to a lather. Uh, could you see to it in your Christian way to give me a slurp of that water from them buckets before you pour it over them tomatoes? Preacher Charles looked up looked at that critter. He said, oh, my word, it's one of them horse creatures from the book of the Revelation. And he threw the buckets down, took off running down the hollow road. They rode on up to their house, went in, and there sat Mondy Rourke in a rocking chair. When she seen company had come, she throwed her apron over her head, and it took them a half hour of talking to get her to pull her apron down. Oh, she looked a sight. Solomon Grundy checked her out good. He looked over Godsey. He said, well, you do got a good strong mule's hind end here. You know, that's where you see the power in a four-legged beast. It's all in the hind end. You know that? You know that if you're from Kentucky. Yeah, and you go to the horse shows. You know, you go down to the rail and you yell to the judge, Look at that rear end, judge, number 57. That's the best rear end you ever going to see. That's how you win a horse show. He said, You got a real nice rear end here, and, and your wife's got a real fine-looking mule head. I ain't seen a birdie or one nowhere else. But there ain't no neck to really stick them together. So you ain't got a whole animal betwixt the two of you. I can't trade pigs for a stump neck mule. <laughs> well, Godsey Rourke said, what am I going to do? He said, well, this is devil poison. There's no question about that. If there's any antidote for devil poison, it'll be scripture. Fetch me your Bible. Well, that took another hour to find the Bible because they didn't know where it was. Them rocks, you know the rocks, they're a bunch of heathen. They never go to church except Christmas and Easter. They go at Christmas time. You remember Ma Mondi sitting on the back row? She'd sit on the back row at Christmas and sing, No hell, no hell. Like that. They say, either. That's what they was. She said, I got that Bible around here somewhere. Only she was going, No, no. I'm speaking mule language like that. Well, finally they dug it out and they blowed the dust off. It is a great big family Bible they kept for recording births and deaths and crunching Bible knots. You keep a Bible to crunch Bible knots with? You know, sometimes they'd be a swelling up on your arm and you go to the doctor and pay $35 copay and he'll call that a ganglion cyst. That's a Bible knot. You just get the family Bible, whack it, it'll go down. You can save yourself a trip to the doctor. They had them a Bible for whacking Bible knots and such. So Solomon, he dusted it off and he laid into reading. He read about creation of the world. He read about Adam and Eve. And then he come to Cain and Abel. And out of that, he read about the Noahic deluge. And then he come to the Tower of Babel. And then there's Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And then there's the 400 years of captivity with the Israelites in Egypt and then he come to it finally after he'd read and read and read he said right here it is Numbers chapter 22 verse 28 this year comes from the story of Balaam's talking ass <laughs> and the donkey turned and opened her mouth and said why have you struck me thrice he said that's what it is right there I'm gonna have to hit you three times with a stick well, Mondi, she went to a brand again. He said, it's in the Bible, and it? It's in the Bible. And he knowed. He had read it in the original language. So he went out, and he cut down a big oak limb. He said, ladies first. And she stood for it. He gave her three good strikes, and her head flew off, and she's a regular woman again. Not bad looking, if I do say so myself. And then he struck her husband, and Godsey's hind parts flew off, and he's a regular man again. And they're so thankful that... That strange creature, its hind end, its head kind of sucked together and it took a big flying leap and jumped right up over the moon that had just come up over Pine Mountain. And folks around there said, if you seen that thing silhouetted against the moon, you'd have seen that its hooves was cloven like old Nick itself. Well then, 
God seeing Mondi, they invited Solomon Grundy to stay for dinner. He said, that'd be mighty nice of you. And while she is frying up some cornbread and things, she said, it's real nice of you, Solomon, real Christian of you to stay and help us out. I'm sorry we had to trouble you. I wouldn't have had to send you for it all if my husband had been paying attention to the calendar, but he's such an old... And then they clapped their hands over her mouth for she said something she'd regret because there's another hour on the clock before that amber day was over. And that was the end of that. 